And it's a long weekend to boot. So let's let's get started. Here we go. Let's be a good day doer. I saw him standing there, sad look in his eye. The kids ran to the playground, but each one passed him by. He was just a new kid here, but then I saw his face. My mama's words raced through my mind. It was like I heard her say, oh, Be a good teacher and do it every day. One kind deed will go so far to make this world a better place. Be a good teacher and you may be surprised. Doing good to others makes you feel so good inside. I see what your name His eyes begin to sparkle and a smile crossed his face. He's not a stranger anymore. Now he is my friend. My life has been better. All because my mama said, Be a good teacher and do it every day. One kind deed will go so far to make this world a better day. Doing good to others makes you feel so good inside. Makes you feel. Makes you feel. Makes you feel. It makes you feel so good inside. Makes you feel. I feel good. Makes you feel so good. Makes you feel folks be aware there's a storm brewing in the gulf of mexico so get check your weather out um it's the whole south and on up into arkansas and tennessee we could get some bad weather coming up so y'all just be just know what's happening and be ready but guess what it's a weekend. It's Friday of a four-day independence celebration. It's going to be so much fun. And I don't have to go anywhere. I can see the fireworks from my back deck. I can barbecue all I want. I got everything I need to barbecue. And we're going to have a fun time in the neighborhood. So... I want to talk to you a little bit today about how you can make it easy on yourself. And I know it's Friday. Now, what I want you to do right now is we're going to go into our kitchens. And I'm going to set the timer for 15 minutes. Yeah, I'm going to do a 15-minute thing. I'm going to, we're not going to play music. I'm going to talk to you while you're going into the kitchen. And you're going to start with a sink full of hot soapy water. That's what we always do when we start in the kitchen. And I used to have, we used to have, uh, make me start crying, Penrod. Penrod was our white cat, and he was notorious for getting up on the kitchen counters. I mean, he, he knew there was a treat somewhere, and I couldn't keep him off the counters. Now, Samantha can't jump like we think she should. And so we... Um, 
she doesn't get up on my kitchen counters, our kitchen counters, um, which makes it good because I would have to sterilize everything. I'm a neat freak when it comes to cooking in the kitchen. I want everything clean. And so that's why I always start with a sink full of hot soapy water. So get your water going in your sink. Grab, grab a blue rag, a purple rag, a gray rag. It doesn't matter what co color rag you use as long as you've got a rag. Preferably a microfiber cloth from Fly Lady. And let's get in our kitchens and let's wipe some things down, put some things away, clear out your countertops, and, and let's just spend 15 minutes in there. You know, today is July the 1st. And I got a little devotional here. I'm going to read that to you. July the 1st. I have to hold it way out here. <laughs> like I'm holding the camera. Uh, so like some of my podcasters. What we believe about God could change everything in our lives. This is from Romans 6, 4. We are therefore buried with him through baptism unto death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. Well, we're learning some new things. And I'm going to teach you today on how to take care of yourself while you're cooking up a storm. You know, there may be a storm brewing in the Gulf, but by golly, we're going to we're going to not have a storm blow up in our kitchen. Do you want to know why your kitchen gets in such bad shape when you're cooking? Cuz you're in a hurry. I want you to stop being in a hurry. I want you to take things slow and steady. My microphone is not doing well that's better let's take things slow and steady and just just get started so first thing we're going to do is that sink full of hot soapy water now we're going to wipe off our counter on the left side of the sink just wipe down the counter is there stuff that needs to be thrown away that's on the counter let's work our way around your kitchen counterclockwise. Yeah, that's the opposite of the way the hands on the clock would go. Just work your way around your kitchen and let's have some fun with it. We're going to spend 15 minutes. I'm, I'm going to do the whole show. We're going to do crisis cleaning. So 15 minutes in our kitchen. Start throwing away the trash. You can run the trash outside if you need to. And let's get it done. Because if you're gonna start cooking, you gotta have a clean kitchen. Kitchen, or you won't. You don't want to go in there. So let's spend 15 minutes in our kitchen. We've got 11 minutes to go. Um, the main thing here is just to keep focus. Work your way around your kitchen systematically, cleaning every counter, putting away everything. Put the dishes in the dishwasher. Get the dishwasher going and get it emptied <sighs> counterclockwise. Yeah, <laughs> I made a joke and I didn't even know it. Counterclockwise. Get your counters cleaned off. So everybody... No, no excuses. If you're going to have a party, you got to get your kitchen clean because people congregate in the kitchen, especially if it becomes stormy and you can't be outside. Now, I want you to start thinking about how to make getting ready for the 4th of July easier on you. And, and I've got some, I've got some tips for you. It's going to be in the essay that goes out tomorrow. Uh, for the ask fly lady question, but here, here you go. First thing, number one, make it a potluck. Have everybody bring something. You provide the burgers and brats or whatever it is you want to cook. And then ask everybody to bring something. You'll be excited about how much fun it can be when everybody brings something. 
Uh, set up a menu if if you would like, or leave it to fate. Hard now. This is hard to do if you're a control freak. Now you may want to assign people things to bring. So here's the menu. Pick one. What do you want to? What do you, What do you want to do? We're going to have baked beans and potato salad and um, angel eggs for twenty people. We're going to have twenty people over. And what do you want to bring? So. Just just let them pick something. And then as you call people, you check that off the list as one less thing that you're going to have. But you better have some backups just in case somebody doesn't show up. Let's see. Assign dishes to the family members. We do. This is what we do at our house. Um, and it makes it good because Robin makes at Thanksgiving. My sister-in-law, Robin, makes the best the best dressing I have ever eaten. And I make pretty good dressing. Uh, but we're not having dressing for the 4th of July. Decide what you're making. Limit yourself to two items. So if you're going to make baked beans and potato salad, then make it and get it done. Get it out of the way. You can pre-cook your potatoes. I like red potatoes for potato salad. And you can... Um, you can boil them up and and then let them cool and put them in the refrigerator. Put them in the refrigerator, Ziploc bag, with the skins on them. And then all you got to do is peel the skins off once they get... Some people put the skins on. Now, wash your potatoes really good if you're going to do that. And there's new potatoes coming. I mean, people picking potatoes all over, pull, digging up potatoes everywhere on the internet. But, you know, make sure you've got Everything you need to make your potato salad. Sometimes I have had to make homemade mayonnaise because we didn't have enough mayonnaise in the house to make potato salad. So get your potatoes cooked. You can make your fixings for your baked beans ahead of time. and Put that in the fridge. All you got to do is add your cans of pork and beans to the mixture after you've drained them. Not washed them and drained them, but just drain the thick liquid off the top. And all you're going to be doing is putting together your potato salad. And putting together your baked beans and putting them in the crock pot and letting them letting them cruise. Uh, let's see. Check and make sure you have enough paper plates, napkins, paper towels, everything you need to keep um, to keep your house, you know, so that everybody has something some something to eat off of. My phone's blowing up. I don't know what's going on. Uh, so you get you provide the paper towels and paper plates and all that stuff. Now I really like those big heavy duty chinette plates. They're my favorite. They are, and if we have a shrimp boil, I like the big old oval ones. But make sure you have the paper plates. We always have a good stock of paper plates. Uh, let's see what else. Here we go. Um, Use your crock pot to keep your house cool and also to, to um, so you don't burn anything. Crock pots don't burn stuff. So if you're going to have to have a lot of onions, just start cutting up onions. Just cut up onions. And be sure and get in bed early the day of the the night, the night before the party. So you can get up and get dressed to lace up shoes, fix your hair, fix your face, and be ready to go. I like to pull my hair back when I'm in the kitchen cooking. You know, I haven't been used to that. But, you know, when, when you've worked in the kitchen and waited tables and stuff, keeping your hair pulled back is just, just a nice thing to do. How are you going to set your table? you got a pretty checkered, red checkered tablecloth you're going to put out? I've got one. I love my red red checkered tablecloth. Makes everything look festive. And I got red dishes to boot. So pick out your clothes. What are you going to wear that day? Know it ahead of time. So that you can make sure everything's laundered and ready to go. And, and these are just some simple tips. Now we have a whole section on our website about 4th of July stuff. We've got the baked bean recipe. We've got the potato salad recipe. I don't have a video on the potato salad. 
But you know, I did print out all the pages. So the main thing here is just to get everything you need that you're going to be putting in in your um, that's you're going to be in charge of the paper plates, the cups. What's everybody drinking? Have you got a big, huge um, wash tub that that you can put ice in and and ice down your drinks and waters? Everybody needs to have something festive to drink. Let's see what's going on. Uh, you can make a big, a big old gallon of of um, lemonade and pour it over crushed ice, and it is amazing. You can make some um, mock sangria with juices and different things for the kids with with oranges cut up in it and lemons and just oh it's just cute as it can be and you can make a fruit salad grab a watermelon a honeydew let's see what else um cantaloupe and just start cutting it all up and putting it in i use my ham container um that my tupperware ham container and i fill that up with little pieces of fruit and I add grapes, and I cut my grapes in half. I add, um, especially do that if you've got little kids in the house, berries, any kind of berries, blueberries, and just mix up some orange juice and some lemon juice. And you might have to add a little bit of sugar to it and pour it over, pour it over these this melon melon balls. I like to, you can cut them up into little squares or you can make little balls out of it. And it's beautiful. If you want to slice a melon in half and flatten out the bottom just a little bit, you'll have a big old bowl to put it in, but make it ahead of time so that you don't have to stand around. And it's better two days. It's better if it's been two days made. Because it just gets this wonderful flavor to it that just mingles all in it. And sometimes you can just even take, take just a few of the melons and put them in a glass with some ice and, and Sprite or something. And you've got a festive drink. Look at this. So you've got a dessert. I've taught you how to make apple pie. And you can make that ahead of time. You can make some apple pie and serve that with some ice cream. There's nothing more 4th of July than apple pie, I'm telling you. So, y'all, there's no excuse to be all worn out the day of. Now, do you know where your cornhole game is? I have one that folds up and that you can anchor down to the ground and toss your bean bags. It's portable, so you could take it with you to the lake or wherever. But just think about what can you what you can do ahead of time that you don't have to wait till the day of. You can make your corn ahead of time. Get your corn shucked, put butter on it, and salt and pepper and some a little bit of I like a little bit of cayenne on my corn and roll it up in a lemon full. Seal it good. Fold it in, seal the ends, and it's gonna steam and be the most amazing corn on the cob you've ever eaten. Now, if you're going to cook a chicken on the grill, you can marinate that chicken. And all you need is just a, a, a little bit of um, a lemon juice or a little, ta little bit of vinegar. And just start mixing together some different marinades, orange juice, soy sauce, just lots of different things. It doesn't, doesn't matter. You just start doing it. Now, I like barbecue chicken. Now, we spent 15 minutes in our kitchen. Make sure the water is not running in your sink. And now we're going to go to the living room right now. Spending 15 minutes in our living room. Yeah, let's let's get our rub scrub out. and Let's get the cat hair and the dog hair off your couch. What else can we do in the kitchen, in the living room? Um, clear off your hot spots because your hot spots make your living room look messy. And then uh, we we can mop the floor right quick. We're not gonna 
We're not going to go crazy in here, but we're going to spend 15 minutes in our living rooms. This is crisis cleaning 101. And, and just 15 minutes, you know, look at your hot spots, clear them out and take care of things. I mean, look at every piece of furniture, look at the window in your, in your living room, the door going outside. We have a back door that goes out to our deck and sometimes it gets puppy nose prints and finger paw prints all over it. And that has to be cleaned. Oh my goodness, I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> anyway, what are you making for dessert? Think about it while you're cleaning up that living room. Uh, plump, plump your pillows. Do the karate chop on your pillows like they do on HGTV. Just, just keep working around counterclockwise or clockwise, however you want to do it. <laughs> I don't know where this comes from, but the main thing here is going to stay focused on our living room. We're not running into the kitchen to do anything else. We're focused on our living rooms. You hear me? We're focused on our living room. So grab a purple rag, blue rag, gray rag. I don't care what color it is. Get it wet and just start wiping things down. Wipe down your coffee table. Wipe down your mirrors just start wiping things down now you can get your feather duster out if you want if you want to but just wipe things down just wiping and walking and wiping and walking and you're gonna have you're gonna have so much fun knowing that your living room is looking good the last five minutes of cleanup we're gonna spend with a mop in our hands our our uh carpet sweeper and, you know, that carpet sweeper is being discontinued. So get it now. Get it now. Get it now. I am so thankful we don't have anything coming from the east right now. From the east. Uh, there's We don't have any ships on the water. Because there aren't any ships on the water. So, y'all, we're going to buckle down and get ready. We're going to have a party and then we're going to be prepared for whatever's coming our way. But just keep focused on your living room. Your living room. What's your front door look like? Is it is it got handprints all over it? Wipe that down. Cuz you know, your front door comes into your living room. Maybe grab your 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 broom, your rubber sweeper, or sweeper and sweep your front porch. We're stay fo staying focused on the living room and the entrance of your house. This is zone one anyway. We got one day in zone one because it's July the 1st. Well, you can have tomorrow too, but main thing is let's get the living room looking good. You know, what's piled up by your front door? Do you have a bunch of shoes there? Get the kids to take the shoes back to their bedroom. So let's stay focused. Somebody's got an outdoor kitchen. That's that's amazing to have an outdoor kitchen. So that you can make an outdoor kitchen with a folding table, a crock pot, um, a grill. You, you can set up an outdoor kitchen just about anywhere. We have ours in the treehouse. That's Robert's screened-in porch, but he calls it the treehouse because it's two and a half stories hot, tall. <clears throat> but you don't have to heat up your house. You don't, and you can cook potatoes in the crock pot. You can wrap up potatoes in aluminum foil and put them in the crock pot, and they'll they'll bake. So, folks, it's going to be a fun weekend because you're going to get your house in order today. We got ten more minutes in our living room, in the entrance, in our front porch. Now, go look out your front door and see. You know, do you have any dead plants out there? Do you have anything that needs watered? You know, just sweep your front porch, sweep your front steps. If you you might need to get somebody to grab the weed eater and weed eat your pathway. Ours is we don't use it very often, and 
it kind of gets growed up a little bit because we don't have, we don't mow. We don't have anything to mow. <clears throat> so it's going to be so much fun. It's going to be so much fun. You know, I hope you get some rain so you're not going to catch a yard on fire if you shoot fireworks. Be safe with the fireworks. But stay focused in your living room and your entrance area and just keep it, keep this flow going. 15 minutes. We've got another nine minutes in our living room. See, it's, you run out of things to do. It's all the DVDs and stuff, messy looking. Put them back in their cases and put them away. Grab your mop. And let's do some detailed mopping. Maybe you want to um, run the carpet sweeper over your throw rugs. I'm, look, I'm looking at my living room. And I've got throw rugs in my living room by the door and in front of the fireplace. And that carpet sweeper does a great job of getting, getting, up, getting up the cat hair and dog hair. You know, do you have too many dog beds? Do they need to be thrown under the back deck? Oh, we got a lot of dog beds. And they use them. Every one of them. What are y'all putting in the bathtub? I'm telling you. What are y'all putting in the bathtub? <laughs> I can't keep up with the chat. Anyway, folks. Stay focused. We're in, we're in the living room and the entrance of your home and your front porch and your dining room, too. I, no, people don't usually eat around the dining room table when they got a 4th of July picnic going on outside. But you still, you may want to set up a buffet there. Everybody go and then everybody go wherever they want to go. I've used my dining room table as a buffet many times. But I've also set up my picnic table outside as a buffet table with a red checkered tablecloth. Where it, so, somebody's got to say, how long is the Freedom 40 sale going to last? Uh, we haven't set an end date yet. So take advantage of it while you can. But just, it, it was Freedom 40 for a reason, 10 days before July the 1st. And July has 31, it was nine days. So take that as a hint. It could last the whole month of July. I That's what I go for. But don't tell anybody I said that. <laughs> I try to make it easy on all of y'all. I really do. I love you so much. Love you so much. Um, Dutch Sheets had an amazing give him 15 this morning. So go check that out. And his brother, Tim, his Wednesday night Bible service had an amazing prayer that I'm going to listen to every day, every day for the next six weeks, I guess. Praying for our country and praying for um, the Supreme Court. Even though they're out of session right now, we knew have we have a new justice. And she got sworn in yesterday. So folks, um, we just need to pray. Pray, pray. Pray, pray, pray. Let's see. Where are we? Okay, we're getting down to five minutes. I want you to grab your mops. I want you to go get your mop wet. Let's see, where am I going? There. See, this is our mop. Get it wet, put the put it on, put the cloth back on your mop. Get the mop cloth wet, put it on, and let's just start mopping the floor. Mopping the floor, making it look good. <clears throat> We're going to mop our floors for five minutes. That's it. Five minutes. Mopping our floors. That's a crowning jewel is a clean floor when you walk into a room and the floor is clean it just makes everything smell and and look good if you like a little pine saw or a little 
I, I, they make a lemon pine saw that I used to love, but I, I just use Windex. I get the get it mopped. I get it get it the mop wet, and then I put a little Windex down, and that gets up any spots where the cat has uh, lost her breakfast. <laughs> Prayer indeed. Yep. So y'all, Dutch is, he had words from our founding fathers. Did you know that John Adams and oh, what is the other one's name that wrote most of the Declaration of Independence, they died on July the 4th within hours of each other. Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson and John Adams both died on July 4th. Check me out. Go look at Wikipedia. They died. And one John Adams' last, last two words was independence forever or freedom forever for, uh, for the United States. Yep. Independence forever. It was Thomas Jefferson. Yeah, I like the Windex. Windex cuts stuff and it still leaves a shine. <clears throat> I also use um, Windex that's antibacterial in my bathroom. I like things clean in my bathroom. And I like to read a book by Bill O'Reilly that is about, it's called Killing England. And it, it's not a long book, but it's about the Revolutionary War, our War of Independence. And you know, if if we hadn't won that war, George Washington would have been hung. Somebody's asking about if you don't have a lot of mobility, just pace yourself. It doesn't have to be 15 minutes in the living room. It can be two minutes. Just rest for 15 minutes and then do two minutes. Gather everything up and then take a break. You can do it. You really can. Yeah, you don't know how good tables have been cleaned at restaurants. One time I watched a waitress who was cleaning off a table drop her cleaning rag on the floor, pick it up and wipe the table off. And I, I swore I would never eat there again. And I rarely have. It was awful, 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 awful. <laughs> but folks, not everybody's as clean as we are. And if you can take a little uh, Windex with you, a little spray bottle of Windex with you and an extra paper towel in your purse to the store, to, to if you go out and eat, especially if you eat outside, those tables can get really dirty. Yeah, I don't like that either, Nancy. Because <clears throat> you just don't know where that rag's been. <laughs> why it's good to stay home as much as possible anyway we got 35 more seconds of doing those floors in the living room and the entrance of your home and then we can go on to the next room and you know what that room is that room is going to be your bathroom your bathroom we got 20 seconds so getting those floors looking good You've, this is crisis cleaning 101. 15 minutes in the kitchen, 15 minutes in the living room, 15 minutes in your main bathroom, and then you're going to take a break and rest for 15 minutes. I'm probably going to have to rerun this one many times because it's going to be a great tool for all y'all. Now, take your mop with you to your bathroom, <clears throat> and we're going to get started in our main bathroom. This is the bathroom that company 
would use. They're not going to go into your bedroom and use your bathroom. They're, this is the main bathroom the company would use. Now, the first thing we're going to do is gather up all the dirty clothes. Every one of them. All the dirty towels and the dirty clothes. Let's get them to the laundry room. Get them right out the door because this is going to make cleaning up easier when you don't have to work around things. Now, <clears throat> you don't want people being surprised by lifting up the toilet seat and it being awful. And our habit for July is swish and swipe. Do you have a toilet bowl brush and a, one of our purple rags in every bathroom? This is going to help you keep your bathroom clean and shiny. And I also like to keep some Cottonelle wipes or something like that in there to wipe down the toilet seat. I, I really had rather use something that was disposable than use my purple rags on my toilet seat. And the main thing Somebody's asking a cooking question. Any foolproof tri trick to not overcooking the potatoes for potato salad? I just boil mine and I cook them for about an hour until the fork slides in. I cook them with the skins on. If you take the skins off, they could fall all apart. But I like red potatoes. Red potatoes are better than Idaho potatoes for potato salad. So back to, to your bathrooms. Clear off your countertops. You keep things sitting out all the time. Now make sure you have plenty of toilet paper in your bathroom because you don't want anybody to run out and have to look under your bathroom sink for toilet paper. That won't be fun because you got so much stuff underneath your sink. But you could push some of that stuff back and stack up some rolls of toilet paper. The main thing is to Clear off the flat surfaces. Put out some fresh towels. Uh, I like to use the box of paper towels that fits upside down in your towel rack so everybody can get a clean paper towel because I don't like people reusing the towels. That spreads germs. Um, you could also set out a basket of white washcloths for everybody to use to dry their hands when they wash their hands. Now, look, put on the eyes of a real estate agent. Pull back your shower curtain or open your shower doors and look around the edge of your bathtub or your shower. Do you have bottles everywhere? Take a laundry basket and just put it in the tub and fill it up with everything but one thing of shampoo and body wash. Just have two bottles in there or a bar of soap. That's all you're going to leave in there. I never heard of sweet potatoes for a potato salad, but I like sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes and butternut squash cut up and grilled. Oh my goodness, that could be wonderful. With some onion. Mm-mm-mm. But I didn't know about making potato salad out of it. So clear out your bathroom. Wipe down. Now swish and swipe. I'm going to explain swish and swipe while you're cleaning your bathroom. You take a wet microfiber cloth, fly ladies, and you wipe down your bathroom mirror. If you're flossing your teeth, you got splatters all over it. That's I call them dental floss home runs. And wipe down your mirror. Because if it looks bad, it, it's going to look like you hadn't cleaned your bathroom in forever. So let's get our wind, our, our, our mirror shining. Then uh, clear the surface, put away your makeup, put away your hairbrush, get everything put where it belongs. If you need to get a, a box or a basket and put everything in it so they can put it back out when everybody's gone and just slide it under your bathroom sink. And then wipe down everything, your, your faucet, your handles, um, the backsplash that's underneath your mirror. It gets really dusty. 
and you're going to make this whole room smell wonderful when you take a little Windex and clean things and shine things up. It's going to be amazing. Going to be amazing. Now, you might need to take some barkeeper's flint friend and clean the sink out. But if you do swish and swipe every day, your sink isn't going to get that dirty. It's just not going to get that dirty. Now, look at your floor around your toilet. Is there something brown coming out from underneath uh, the toilet a little bit? I know it sounds gross, but you might need to get your rubber scrubber, your rubber scrubber, and, and scrub around the edge of your toilet and wipe it down. Wipe it down. You're going to, it's going to look wonderful because you're going to know it's clean. Now empty the trash. I keep my toilet bowl brush in a crock. It's an old vase that I've had for 25 years. A friend of mine made it and she gave it to me and I just I absolutely love it. And it holds, I, I used to use shampoo and body wash and stuff that I didn't like the smell of or I was allergic to to clean my toilet. Now I just use Dawn dishwashing liquid and I use an antibacterial Dawn dishwashing liquid in my toilet bowl brush container and I fill it up and then I put that much water in it and let it And just leave my brush in it. And I hold it up, let it drip, and then I swish my toilet. And when you swish your toilet every day, you never have to see that nasty ring around your toilet. And a clean toilet says, it's nothing like a clean toilet to say, I love you, when you're, whole, when you're hugging that toilet and you're sick. <clears throat> so doing a swish and swipe every single day is going to keep your home, your bathroom, always fresh smelling and wonderful, ready to go all the time. You're never going to be ashamed of your bathroom. Yes, my water is pretty hard too. And I keep a knife in my trash can and one of these. I have an old one, one of our prototypes that's hot pink that I use in my toilet. And I can take my toilet bowl brush and use it to push it around and not have to put on the rubber glove. So now I want you to look at the rug in your bathroom. Do you have some rugs? Do they need to go through the laundry? If you think they need to go through the laundry, then let's throw them down in the basement and, and get them started because fresh rugs just make the whole ba bathroom smell good. So get some air moving in that bathroom. Turn the fan on and you're going to be so proud of your bathroom and you've only spent 15 minutes in there we've got six more minutes to go so i want you to get your mop wet again and let's mop the floor in your bathroom that's the crowning touch now make sure you know look up around the ceiling of your your bathroom because you know if you're sitting on the toilet and your company you're a captive audience and you may see that cobweb up in the corner uh, are you or that spider walking across the ceiling? So check out, make sure you don't have any any cobwebs or, or critters crawling on the ceiling. Yes, I like Zud too, but I don't really have rust. I have hard water. Really hard water. Okay, folks, we got five minutes to go of cleaning our bathrooms. Now get your 
get the laundry going that you've taken out of there so you don't go have it piled up in the utility room. Because a lot of people come into their house through their laundry room. And you don't want that messy. And just, you know, have fun with what we're doing. Put on some good music. And uh, let, let's talk about the last 15 minutes because when we get through with the 15 minutes in the kitchen, we're going to take a break. Yeah, we're going to take a break for 15 minutes. Now, I'm counting on you to do that because that's the most important part of this whole thing is for you to rest. For you to take a break and rest. Now, if you need to go into the kitchen and start the whole process over again, it's okay. But rest for that 15 minutes. And you know, just finish up what you got to do in your bathroom and stand back and be proud of it. Now, if you scrub, you don't really have to scrub your tub until you get into it tonight. But the main thing is get those bottles out. I've just been running my mouth and while you've been working up a storm. Yeah, when you got too many towels, they become, they take over. They take over. So you may want to fold them up and leave them on the dryer. Don't put them back in the bathroom for right now. <clears throat> You want your bathroom looking as neat and as clean as possible. Be sure to lift up the toilet seat, wipe the back of the toilet seat and the rim of the toilet. And then our toilet bowl brush has this great little thumb on it that gets under the rim of the toilet. And it has actually helped toilets to flush better. So think about cleaning the rim of the toilet. So, folks, this has been fun, hasn't it? We've got two more minutes to go, two and a half minutes. It's amazing. It is just amazing what you can get done to, when you stay focused instead of jumping all over the place. Staying focused in the kitchen, staying focused in the living room, staying focused in your bathroom. You can do it. You really can. Now listen to me. Do you hear me? I want you to take a break for 15 minutes when this is over with. I want you to take a break. I want you to sit down. I want you to put your feet up. I want you to drink something wonderful. Sip on some. Last night, Robert made me a big glass of, of uh, lime water with uh, key lime juice in it and, and, and bubble water. And it was amazing. I loved it. So everybody, we got a minute to go, a minute to go. Y'all have done so, so well today. Staying focused, staying focused on what we're doing. We're doing a little crisis cleaning to get ready for company. Now, you might have to spruce things up a little bit on, on Monday morning. Uh, you may want to like do a simple crisis clean every day until the, until the guests start walking in the door. But you're going to be ahead of the game. And you're going to pick up after yourself and you're going to keep it clean. And you are going to be amazed at how wonderful your house stays when you stay focused on picking up after yourself. One time I asked my clerk when I was county commissioner, I asked her, how do you keep your house clean, Sandra? And she says, she looked at me like I had two heads because she was born organized. And she said, well, Marla, it's real simple. If you get something out, you put it away. So get into Sandra mode. If you get something out in the next three days, you got to put it back where it belongs. That means if you get something out and you use it up, throw the trash away. If you get something out to do something with it, do what you got to do and then put it back where it belongs. 
And as my granny always said, everything has a place and everything in its place. Well, y'all, I want you to take the next 15 minutes and take a break because this is how it works. 15 in the kitchen, 15 in the living room, 15 in the bathroom, and then 15 minutes for you. And tomorrow I'm going to be sending out this essay on um, <clears throat> taking, taking, make it easy on yourself. Yeah, make it easy on yourself. I love you all. Y'all have fun. Get stuff done so you can enjoy your company. We hadn't got to have much company. It's not your timer, Carla. It's mine. So set your timer for 15 minutes. Take a break. And I'll catch you later. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Father in heaven, please be with our country as we celebrate our independence. Keep us safe, Lord. Keep my fly babies all over the world safe. Help them to celebrate in their own way. Thank you, Lord, for everything you do for us. Protect us. Protect our children. And Father in heaven, thank you so much for sending your son to die for our sins on the cross. All these things we ask in your son's holy name. Amen and amen. To God be the glory, y'all. Be good, kind, and sweet. Be good to yourself by making some things ahead of time. If you need to go to the grocery store today and get everything you need for your 4th of July celebration, get it and then start putting things together one baby step at a time. Be kind to others by inviting some people over. And let the sweetness and the joy that is in your heart that comes from the good Lord show the world who you are, a child of the Most High God. I love you all. I'll see you later. <laughs>